inside the line, the Catskills. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to episode number two. Tonight we'll be diving into some history of the Catskills with the first official trail ever created in the Catskills and an intro to the 3500 Club with what hikes you to start off with to get your 3500 Club patch. Enjoy! We are live. Welcome to Inside the Line, the Catskills. I am your host, Stash. My friend is with me, Joe. He is a, a fellow star team member uh 3500 club member and, and probably many more things um so joe introduce yourself buddy hi how you doing stash um basically i retired in 2012 and uh when i really started hiking in the cats and i did my first hike on june 2012 i started on twin and i just fell in love with the cat skills and uh a year and a half later i finished the winters and the and the regular peaks it was awesome and then a couple of years later you joined me in search and rescue right i joined you on search and rescue and last year uh i finished my grid uh, in march 2020 and before that i did the uh, catskill 100 highest which was another awesome set of peaks and in between all that, I finished the whites, the 48 and the whites. And now I'm working on the, uh, the Adirondack 46. Awesome. That's an, that's insane. Uh, hats off to you, Joe, everything. And then you, you just also became a, a wilderness first responder, correct? Yeah. About a couple of months ago. Um, it was a great class. We did it over, uh, four days and two zoom sessions, a lot of material. I wish I could remember it all. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was I was there with you the last day, and and the stuff you guys were talking about was uh, kind of crazy about uh, like starfish and stingrays and stuff. I don't think we're gonna see a lot of that in the Catskills. I hope not. I really hope not. That'd be scary. So once again, I'd like to thank uh, Mike and Stomp of Sounds Like a Search and Rescue podcast for influencing me to do this. Uh, I, I listened to their new one today, uh, and they gave me a shout out, which was pretty crazy. I didn't think they. They would ever do that, but they're great guys. Listen to their stuff. It's awesome stuff about uh, hiking in New Hampshire and search and rescue in New Hampshire. Great stuff. And we also, on our site, if you can't see it, we have a uh, a little app called uh, Buy Me a Coffee. It's for donations. Uh, this is not, of course, free. Hopefully, I get some sponsors once in a while, and we'll get some better platforms. But this comes out of the pocket. But you know what? I don't mind. I'm having fun. Hopefully, the people I interview are having fun. And uh, that's what it's all about, of course. So let's uh, start off the, the day. Joe, what, what are you drinking, bud? Um, I'm drinking my Malbec, uh, 2019 Malbec that I made. Interesting. What is, what is that? Is that a wine? Or... Oh, yeah. It's a red wine. I've been making wine for about 15 years. And uh, I make a couple of different varieties. Excellent. And tonight I'm, drink, I'm drinking my Malbec. It's crazy. You're probably going to get wasted like everybody else does when you give them free stuff. Yeah, I don't <laughs> intend to. Well, I got me some some 1911 uh, hard cider. Or um, John got this for me when he was up in the Finger Lakes. So trying some some new stuff. It's not bad for. I'm not a beer guy. I'm more of a uh, a hard liquor kind of guy. But this hard cider is pretty good. Joe, I remember you talking about. So just for your information, everybody, this is our this is our second episode two. We had recording problems last time we tried to record. So uh, this is our second episode, two. We'll put this out later. But, uh, Joe, I remember you saying you were on a previous hike with your 11-year-old grandson, correct? Yeah. Uh, two weeks ago, we were taking care of my grandson. Uh, and uh, he just finished his 30, uh, 31st peak. And we did it with Lone Rocky, Balsam Cap, and Friday. We did it as a through hike. And he just loved it. He, uh, there was so much bushwhacking and he just, he just loved every minute of it. That's incredible. And for those who are listening, Lone, Rocky, Friday and Balsam Cap are all bushwhacks on the 3500 Club. I would have to say about 60% of it is, is total bushwhacks, I would say. Going up Friday and Balsam Cap is an easy herd path, but Everything else is is almost bushwhacking, especially going between Balsam Cap and Rocky is awesome, one hundred percent bushwhacking. Uh, and an eleven year old did it with Joe, which is crazy that 
that Joe would ever, somebody would ever go on a hike with Joe because he just leads you to the crazy stuff. And we'll, we'll talk about that later. Also about Joe, he is uh, called the plane crash hunter. Um, future episode, we're going to have Joe talking about plane crashes, me and him hunt for plane crashes. He does most of the research and then I help him out with the bushwhacking. So remember that, that Joe is the plane crash king of the Catskills. And we'll, we'll definitely talk about that later. I haven't done anything. Uh, I don't plan on to. I've been working a lot. So hopefully I'll get out on a hike uh, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. Are we doing anything this coming Tuesday or no? Uh, not together because you backed out of Sunday. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Unfortunately, work. I got to save up that money so I can retire like you guys and hike every day <laughs> for the rest of my life. Yep, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. We got some Catskill news. Um, there was recent flooding from Hurricane Henry or Henry up in Wyndham. And then I heard in the big cloves down in Catterskill and uh, Platte Clove and stuff like that. So be on alert. I don't know if any roads are closed. I still think the route from uh, Hunter to Jewett is closed because they're trying to rebuild the bridge that went down in December. But other than that, no, no news. Um, and tonight we're going to be uh, going over some history of the Catskills Almost as always, I like to do history first, and then we'll talk about the the great 3500 Club that Joe and I are both a part in, and uh, we've also partaked our, our volunteer time with them. So we'll, we'll definitely get into that. But um, So let's start our, our first part is uh, Catskill history and early trails of the Catskills. In 1982, the state spent $250 to build a trail up the highest mountain in the Catskills, which is uh, Slide Mountain. $250 is, is pretty pretty cheap this day and age. It would cost, I don't even know, thousands and thousands, I'm guessing, uh, to build something up there. This slide was only proven to be highest by Arnold Goyette in 1886. Before that, everybody thought Catterskill High Peak was the highest because of its distinct shape. Catterskill High Peak is, is definitely stands out amongst a lot of other uh, peaks in the Catskills. And a lot of tourists, of course, always want to come to the highest peak in the Catskills. So once they found this out, the, tra the state decided to build a trail up it where they also had, which is pretty crazy, uh, some towers up there, look lookout towers. If you've ever been up slide, the top is completely full of trees. It's all been grown back. Um, and having a 360 degree view of the Catskills when you're on top of the Catskills, is it's gotta be absolutely phenomenal. And I, I couldn't imagine that. And I remember, I don't know if Joe's ever been up there during like big snows, but I know some people have been up there after like five or six feet of snow and they said they can actually see around a 360 degree view, which got to be insane. Correct? I mean, maybe if you're standing, standing on Burroughs Rock, you might be able to, you know, with a couple of feet of snow. Possible. Yeah, it would be phenomenal. But uh, this trail was uh, probably the most heavily trafficked trail, and it still is. I got to admit, it's one of, one of the most heavier ones. And uh, the summit was limited at, at before they started building this. So once they built the trail, they put the lookout towers. And I remember seeing pictures, old pictures of this, where it was basically four by fours or, or six by sixes stacked on top like a pyramid. And it looked very, very scary and very crazy. But hey, I guarantee I would, I would go up there and do that if it gave me a 360 degree view on top of slide mountain definitely so slide mountain is very number one significant to that that was the first trail built but it's also really cool because at the top of slide mountains more towards the top there are quartz pebbles found um it makes it like a garden feel uh with the quartz pebbles these are found nowhere else in the catskills and they have likely likely they would not have survived the wisconsin glaciation i forgot how to say that <laughs> And it been uh, speculated that Slide Summit may have been a nunatak, which I looked that up today, a summit or ridge of a mountain that protrudes from ice, ice field or glacier. So if you can think about it, Slide once maybe stood above a glacier, was the only peak above a glacier, which is pretty neat. But they found striation marks on the, the rocks along the summit ridge, thinking that basically the, the glacier carved over the top. So it hasn't been proven yet, but they're, they're, they look into it and, and uh, it's pretty neat stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's about it for our Catskills history right now. Uh, it's pretty, pretty cool stuff that it only costs $250 to build a, a trail up to the top of, of uh, the highest peak 
And nowadays, I don't even know how much it cost. Probably a lot, a little bit too much. Uh, and it takes a lot of, of planning, definitely. And they uh, made a really good trail. I got to admit, that trail that they made a long time ago was fantastic. It's it's very little gain, but still just enough to keep you in your heart race. And uh, it's absolutely a perfect trail, especially in the winter. Correct, Joe? Oh, it's it's awesome in the winter. It must must go in the winter. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this brings us to our first and, and only content of the night, which is the intro to the 3500 Club. So uh, back in 1949, uh, an idea came to two people of the Catskills named Bill and Case Spangleberger. Um, they wanted to climb all the, the Catskills that are above 3,500 feet or higher. They climbed them all in about three years and shared their idea with local hiking clubs, but none of people really were interested. And uh, it remained dormant for another decade till about 1962 when the uh, 3500 Club was actually born and it was headed by Bill. After completing the required peaks, which is 33 of them, 37 total if you're going to include the, uh, the winters, candidates submit a tally sheet to the club's membership chairman, who is Dave White, makes a fantastic story about your your peak adventures which is absolutely amazing and i love it i wish i could get like four or five of them but probably not <laughs> they receive a card letter and patch and assign a hiking number that is printed on a certificate and uh it's presented at the annual dinner all in all there are 33 peaks you uh, have to climb in the the summer times or whenever you want and then there's four required in the winter rocky has been proven to be below 3500 feet but It'll be always on the list. We're going to, hopefully they're going to make people do it forever. I know people are going to get mad about that, but you know what? Rocky is, is definitely in my heart is one of my favorite peaks. Slide Mountain tops out at, at, at the highest as 4,180 feet. Um, 14 of those peaks are trailless. And I say that with quotation marks because uh, a lot of them had, had her, have her paths now. So it's, it's kind of stinks because Joe and I are, are bushwhacking kings. We love bushwhacking, and uh, especially when you're doing whatever you want instead of uh, following the GPS pattern that, that your uh, lieutenants give you all the time. <laughs> but in addition, the four winters are Slide, Panther, Blackhead, and Balsam. And winters means uh, December 21st to March 21st. Uh, winter is requirement. This winter requirement is very unique for the Northeast because no other hiking clubs require you to hike in the winter. And this... Is very special because it gives you a feel of the winter finally if you've never if you never want to hike in the summer everybody want to hike in the, the summer because it's nice out you know you know there's no extra purchases required like snowshoes or spikes and stuff like that but this definitely made me fall in love with with the catskills even more and i i really didn't want to do it i hated winters in new york state cold you know wet and soggy at times with the snow it's just it was horrible but when i hiked my first winter, uh, Panther Mountain, during a snowstorm, it was absolutely magical. I fell in love, and I love hiking in the winter. And I know Joe likes in, hiking in the winter, correct? Oh, it's my favorite time of year to hike, definitely. And I think I actually think I might have started on Panther also. Oh, nice. You know? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a it's a great peak to hike in the winter as well. So, I mean, we had we had no views at all, but that sound of there was nobody else on the trail. The sound of the wind. And the snow, we had a nice little snowstorm at the time. So it was great. And that's what, what makes the club unique is that you hike, the, hike those winter peaks and then all of a sudden you're falling in love with it. So total all in all climbs is, is 37. There's now 3,600 in the club. And uh, recently, I think it was like like six months ago or maybe a year ago, they actually became 3,500 people in the club, which is pretty neat. That went out to our friend Julie, actually. She got the 3,500th member. Ms. Mrs. Castle. Yeah, Miss Mrs. or Miss Catskill. We don't. Right. Um. Yeah. Miss Catskill. We'll we'll get we'll get her on here for some sometime. Uh, for some talking about plane crashes or something. But definitely, this was uh my greatest accomplishment. I gotta say, I uh didn't think I would ever do this in my life, and it just felt so amazing to to conquer these peaks and to have fun on them and to enjoy the amazing views and and challenges of the Catskills. If you want uh, a lot of good information, it's uh, CatskillMountaineer.com. Check it out. Awesome information. Uh, 
Michael Cantwell does an incredible job on that. He's actually updated a lot of things. I, I got mostly all my info from the CatskillMountaineer.com website. I don't know. Have you checked that place out, Joe? Oh, yeah. I used it. I I did a lot of research for uh, plane crashes on the Mountaineer website. And other things as well. Yes. Yes. He's got a lot of good information. He has actually, I think he's the website that has uh, a great piece on lightning, if I remember. Oh, nice. Uh, lightning like strikes on the on the peaks. Well, just you know how to protect yourself from you know and during a lightning storm. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, he's a great. Has a little module. I I think that's him. Oh, really? Nice. I'll have to check it out. He's a he's a great guy. I, I've talked to him several times, and I've wanted to hike with him because he wants to explore the uh, the clove, the Catterskill clove, and uh, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. There's there's all those those amazing cloves that are probably the steepest in the Catskills. But one day I'm a little hesitant on going up there because of how scary it looks from the escarpment trail. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, we we're, were thinking about talking about great first hikes for the club. Um, one of them that comes to mind uh, is, is always Wyndham high peak. I think that's a, an amazing, easy hike. Um, definitely there's multiple parking areas, uh, Elm Ridge and Wyndham. Peck Road in Maple Crest and Big Hollow in Maple, Maple Crest. Um, every direction offers amazing viewpoints and uh, are well maintained, well marked hiking trails, all with awesome experiences. All in all, uh, I'd have to say one of the the coolest ones is coming from. I think you can both approach this Elm, Elm Ridge and Peck Road is the uh, what people call the Enchanted Forest the big tall pines you walk through a a field of big tall pines and it's absolutely magical especially in the winter definitely love that that area now maple one in a big hollow is the longest being 7.6 miles um with a little over 1400 feet of game but that also offers the best use definitely has amazing views in all directions burnt knob has an amazing view of the the blackheads um and you're also going along the escarpment so it's very cool to meet some people in there that have been doing the the, the through hike of the whole escarpment and at the top offers great views of the uh the blackheads end of the hudson valley where you can uh see over into albany into vermont and massachusetts and connecticut amazing amazing first hike for your for the catskills um joe your thoughts what do you love about wyndham i think it's an excellent first hike um and on the top uh, if you um, on one, one side, you look north and the other side, you look south to the Blackheads and it's a great view of the Blackheads. And you're right. You could see Albany, I think, on a good clear day from the north side. Uh, it's a it's a perfect first hike. Perfect. Definitely. And it's uh, all, all in all, uh, most of them, most of the trails around six to, to seven and a half miles. You're going to have a little bit of game. Yeah. 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 It's not. Not a lot of not a lot of game. What you're you're correct. I think even from Peck, the easiest is Peck Road. I think. Yeah, definitely. And that's probably fourteen hundred and around six miles round trip. Yeah, I mean uh, the only thing with Peck, I mean there, there's parking's limited on Peck Road, of course. So get there early. Parking's also limited on on Big Hollow. So get there early because you got three other peaks around there that you can climb, and then multiple viewpoints. Uh, Elm Ridge is the longest, but it also has. I don't even know how many parking areas that that's got to hold at least seventy cars. On twenty three. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Definitely. Um, but all in all, every direction offers a, a phenomenal first hiking experience in the Catskills. I always love going to Wyndham High Peak for like a, like a beautiful easy day to take off, you know. Um, and like Joe said, you can see Albany sometimes on a clearest day. You can even see the the Capitol buildings, which is absolutely phenomenal. I forgot how many miles away. That's probably like 60 miles away. Probably. Yeah, as the crow flies, maybe like 30, 30 to 60 miles away. Not sure. But definitely great first hike. Yeah. Uh, on to the next one. Another great first hike in the Catskills to get you into the 3500 Club. Slide Mountain. Definitely. Slide is the tallest mountain in the Catskills. Uh, it's one of the most popular. It's got a big parking area, which is on uh, Route 47, correct? Correct. Okay, 47. I was going to say 42, but that's over in Hockett. Nope, 47. Route 47. Uh, it's right after the Panther Giant Ledge Trailhead. A lot of parking areas. Total 
mileage around 6.2 miles with 1400 feet of gain uh right in the beginning you have a cool creek crossing which most of the times it's dry but once it when it gets running it's pretty cool it's pretty fun you rock hop and stuff like that after the uh the creek crossings you get up a little gain and you get into a little slippery section where there's uh some man-made steps right at the end and then you'll take a right and you'll start going up slide mountain on the old uh I would say that it's a log. It feels like a logging trail. It feels too good to be a a, a trail that's not been logged. <laughs> uh, once you get above uh, above thirty five hundred feet, you'll start hitting some uh, the beautiful balsams of the Catskills. You didn't get that on Wyndham High Peak. That's what stinks. But if you do slide, you get the beautiful balsams, and that really shows you the the, the beautiful part of the Catskills is when you get up in the balsams. You get that smell, that fresh smell of the balsams. I can't. I think I have like four or five different soaps that have the balsam smell um, because it's so good. Once you get up to this certain part, you'll you'll be going along the edge of the mountain, and you call um, when this this one place that you get into is called the I call the tunnel, and it's absolutely phenomenal. Joe Joe knows this area; it's it's magical, right? Yeah, it's when you when you hit you, you go pretty far up. It's probably above thirty five, and then you hit the ridge you hit the ridge line, and you basically go left across the top of the peak, I think. I yeah, correct. And um, the way the, the balsams are on both sides makes it feel like you're going through a tunnel. And uh, in the winter, it's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I have pictures of winter and summer, which is really neat. Um, if I ever make a web page, I'll definitely post them on there. I think I got a web page going, but I got to figure out how to do it. <laughs> um, but definitely one of those cool feels. I remember talking to some people at the, uh, the stewardship and they, I told them about that section, and they said that that section was absolutely incredible. And like I said, once you get up a little little further up, it'll start flattening out. And most of the time, once you get up into the balsams, you'll also hear the uh, the wood thrush or the bicknell thrush. And like I said, I remember talking about this before. I forgot what John Perros called the song that they sing. It's like a golden flute uh, with with something else. I forgot what it was, but it's it's a perfect. Perfect way to know you're in the Catskills is, is the Bicknell Thrush song. Is just what they sing is, is incredible. And if you can whistle, whistle back because they whistle right back to you and they, they love it. And uh, once you get above that uh, that certain time, once again, with the balsams, you'll you'll connect with nature, especially when you're alone or with something else, someone else. It feels totally different. It feels, I don't know, you're away from everything in life and you are connected with mother nature and you can see what mother nature has created and it's amazing and just before the summit is uh the beautiful viewpoint of slide mountain that uh i don't know it's it's it can't it just feels different than the other places i mean they definitely got i wouldn't say better views but just as spectacular views in the catskills but slide makes you feel like you are on top of the world the other peaks around it are only like a hundred feet lower or not even and uh, it looks like you look over at them and they're small, tiny little specks. It's amazing. And they, the DEC, I, I remember recently wrote, opened this up in the past couple of years. And uh, they did a phenomenal job. You can see Panther Mountain now. You can see over out to the west. You can see basically, I'd, I'd have to say that's a 180 view, correct, Joe? Pretty much. Yeah, it's a great, it's, a, it's one, of the, the good, one of the good viewpoints. Definitely. And I, I love that, that viewpoint. And it's great to be when you're alone, sit there for, I've sat there for hours. Absolutely great. And then uh, once you, you proceed after the viewpoint, you could uh, get to the top where it's like bare rock. It's not totally bare rock, but there's still pines around you. And you can see old blocks of the, the, the old towers on there. It looked like it used to be a fire tower, but there was no fire towers on the, on the slide. So this was all uh, old lookout towers for, for tourists, really. So it was pretty, pretty neat. And I believe I remember reading somewhere that the Winnie Club actually charged people to go up there one time. Five dollars or something. One for one, maybe it wasn't five. I was too much back then. Uh, maybe like a dollar or something. I read that somewhere. I'll have to check that out. Also, uh, when you get to the top, you'll see all the open rock, and then there's a little, there's the trail that goes down to towards uh, Wittenberg and Cornell, and right below that, that start of that trail is the Burroughs plaque. Um, Joe reminded me about this the last uh, session we had. And uh, it's dedicated to John Burroughs because John Burroughs, if you look him up, loved the Southern Catskills and loved Slide Mountain. That's where he researched the uh, Bicknell Thrush and he approached Slide Mountain from Woodland Valley, which is crazy. I've done it. 
I think once or twice now. I mean, I've, I've gone down with Joe and we'll talk about that later, but I've gone up it through one of the ridges that John uh, Burroughs hiked and it was absolutely phenomenal. I'll have to take Joe up. Have you gone up that way, Joe, up that little ridge right off of Woodland? No, I know you, I know you said you have, I'd like to try it. I haven't, I haven't done it. Excellent. I get to lead Joe on a bushwhack. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Plaque says, I, I, I mean, I wrote this down very, uh, very briefly. I, I took a note on it. it. says, he and his early writings introduced Slide Mountain to this world, and John Burroughs slept several times below this rock. And this perfectly makes perfect statement about the, the Catskills. Here the works of man dwindles in the hearts of the southern Catskills. I agree with that, definitely, especially when... Uh, you're bushwhacking out there. You seriously see no trace of man, and it's absolutely phenomenal. Once again, one of the best hikes. Uh, make sure when you're at the top, you retrace your steps back down, because if you start going the other way, you'll end up on Cornell and Wittenberg, and that's one hell of a hike back to your car, especially going up slide. It's, it's slide is a, is a tough one from that way. Definitely learned my lesson several times. Joe, your, your thoughts on this hike. I've talked so much. I need you to talk. Yeah, Um even though it's the highest peak, I think it's another easy peak. It's not, it's not unlike, you know, uh, Wyndham. It's not really a hard climb. It's not that long. Uh, it's an easy first peak, even though it's the highest in the Catskills. Um, and a lot of people do it. I'm kind of excited because tomorrow I'm going to be doing my first trail steward, sitting in the parking lot on 47, you know, hopefully meeting lots of people tomorrow. Excellent. Um, it's, yeah, my first one, because I was so busy all summer taking care of my grandson. Excellent. That's going to be fun. Yeah. And uh, I think another thing we should say that slide is probably a really good first uh, snowshoe. Very good point. The trail. It. Uh, I think it's probably, I mean, I wouldn't do it, you know, in three or four feet of snow, but, you know, when there's a foot of snow on the ground, I think it would be a great first snowshoe. That's a great point. Um, that's a very good introduction to the winter as well. Right, because there's no crazy scrambles or anything that would be difficult. So. Yeah, there's no obstacles. There's there's like one obstacle towards the top, and that's that's very, very limited. Yeah, but that's not bad. But yeah. um, good. We're getting close to the winter, and, uh, you know, if people are listening, that uh, it would be a good snowshoe. Definitely. I agree with that. Um my friend uh, was we'll talking about uh, snowshoeing in the winter. Our previous recording, I had my friend John on here, and uh, he did his first winter with us going up slide. He said he didn't have the proper gear, but he did. He had he had the, the right gear. He had uh, micro spikes, but they weren't as thick and as tough as the ones we had, as aggressive. So uh, on the way up, it was okay. On the way down, it was horrible. And uh, when he hit this one spot, uh, he fell, hit his shoulder and his whole body on the, on his right side and he started laughing uh so and we were like we were like what is wrong with this guy he broke his arm or he fractured his arm sorry he fractured his arm and he just kept laughing and it was uh it was very odd but once again john john remembered or thought that skimping on on gear is not really something you should do in, especially in the winter and he's had several times in the winter where he's gone and he's just like man i'm very glad i bought these expensive more expensive than the the spikes than the 30 dollars spikes that you can get at like walmart or dicks or something like that definitely go with the aggressive stuff especially when you're going in the winter don't want to skimp out on gear but yes joe definitely perfect great introduction to a winter hike i agree with that definitely all right, our last uh, one we're gonna we're gonna talk about about a good introduction to the 3500 club is hunter mountain Hunter Mountain is the second tallest in the Catskills at 4,045 feet. Um, it's a longer hike. It's 7.5 miles from Spruceton Road with around 2,000 feet of gain, but at 2,000 feet of gain is, is spread out about 3.6 miles, 7.5 miles round trip, 3.6 miles up to the top. And it's a very easy hike. I, I, it's, a, it's a basically a log road all the way to the top with barely any obstacles. Um, actually, there is no obstacles on the way to the top. It feels like it's almost... It's it's paved. That's what that's what I get the feeling is. But uh, there's a horse stable about a, uh, a mile up, and once you start going up past that horse stable, is when it gets a little bit more aggressive with the elevation gain. It's a beautiful walk up to the the horse stable. 
but after that the elevation gain kind of doubles and you're 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 battling some elevation but it's very once again easy it's a, it's a dirt basically a dirt road and it feels like it's maintained i i guarantee it is because they have to bring stuff up there sometimes almost all the way up or about three quarters of the way up is 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 a very aggressive approach um but it's very nice makes your heart beat but it's very good for you it's very good for hiking is very good so um about i would say maybe like halfway up is uh the spring which is very unique on uh on hunter mountain and the spring is flowing i've never seen it not flowing it's always flowing 100 percent. joe have you ever seen it dry never never that spring is is a beautiful joy when you're going up because it's it's cold as heck and it's it's drinkable i've i've had never i've i've drank out of it like five or six times and i've never had a problem um some other people might have a problem but it's always great to see that spring you know you're like almost halfway there or maybe even further and uh it's always good to to get that cold water on your face and on your head i love that a little bit after the spring is uh the spur trail to the lean to which leads you out to the um, the great John Rob lean to and uh, a beautiful view of the Spruce in the Valley. Don't skimp on that, that viewpoint because it's only, it's not, it's a couple hundred feet, not even, or maybe a little bit more, but it's a beautiful viewpoint. You don't want to miss out on, on a viewpoint, especially on a cloudy day when you're going up Hunter and you can't get anything in the, uh, on the fire tower. So definitely it's also a good place to relax and catch your breath and then proceed on to the hike. One thing about going up Hunter Mountain is once you get to the top, it flattens out a little bit, and there's a lot of muddy spots. Um, just try to stay in the in the in the middle of the trail. Trail winding is not good, especially in, in these places where the trail is already huge. Um, you're already going in the balsams and stuff, so just get muddy. It's just mud. It's no problem. You know what are you there to hike for? The views and to get your feet dirty, right? So after you get all through all that mud, you start gaining a tiny little bit more and you're finally at the top of the mountain with the fire tower. One of the best views in the Catskills, 360 degree view. You basically see almost everything. The only full path you don't see is the Devil's Path. You get to see the Blackheads. You get to see the Burroughs Range. You get to see the Spruceton Valley. I don't know. It's it's a very awesome view. Um, I was just up there two weeks ago. I didn't get any view, but I still enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah, um, basically right after that, you retrace your steps back to your car so you don't go. Once again, there's other trail systems going to other directions. Don't want to go that way because then you'd have to retrace your back steps back up the mountain and it's a pain in the ass, especially when you go down uh, Becker Hollow. <laughs> Becker Hollow is a fun one. So excellent. That's a, that's a good first introduction to the, the Catskills. What do you think about this uh, Hunter Mountain hike, Joe? Well, out of all three, this is this is the toughest one. Um, you know, not that it's very difficult compared to the rest, but I mean, um, it's probably the hardest of the three because of the elevation gain, uh, and a little bit longer, but you know, I've went up there probably six times before I went to the lean to, and the lean to is really a treasure because you go through these boulders, the size of like, I think they're probably the size of houses, right? Don't you think so? Oh yeah. They're, they're huge. And you go through this boulder field and you get to the view. It's, it's, uh, as a, and you correct, it's probably a good couple of hundred feet. And that's all it is. And it's, you really should go there because I know I didn't go there for a couple, you know, after six or seven times up. And I finally went there and I'm just going, wow, I really missed a, <laughs> a great section to go through and a nice view. One thing interesting though, you know, you were talking about it being a road. I know maybe a couple of years ago, they, they put a lot of gravel down on the road. And, and I know every time we des I descend, I, I wind up slipping on my butt on the way down. You know, it's just it's uh, because of the gravel. You have to be careful, you know, and watch your step on the way down. I agree. I think I know where you're right after the horse stable, correct? When it starts gaining. Yeah. Almost all the, the way up. steeper sections that they it's just a gravelly. Maybe they didn't put it down, but it's just a gravelly section. And they it's kind of slippery. Yeah. I agree. So it's not you, terrible. Once again, proper footwear, stuff like that, water, uh, food. We'll go over that in a, in a couple in a couple minutes. But yeah, Joe, that one spur trail that leads goes to the lean to. They got like Joe said, the great big rocks, and you get to squeeze yourself through one part of it, and then you kind of nudge your way through another part, and 
you get to the lean-to, and it's a very cool, very cool spot. Kids probably love that. I guarantee the kids love it. I know I do. I, I got it. My grandson thought that was the best part of the hike. Oh, nice. I mean, it, it is. It's it's a fire tower, so it's 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 a fire tower. It's just a, a, a log road all the way to the top. So definitely taking this little side trail that's only a couple hundred feet definitely gives a, a different feeling to it. So it's it's really really neat and really fun. Once again, three hikes for the three hikes for great introduction to the Catskills uh, 3500 Club is uh, Wyndham High Peak, Slide, and Hunter. Check them out. We talked about Wyndham High Peak on that last episode, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, um, basically also one thing to remember, once again, on these hikes, I mean, they, they might be the easiest hikes we recommend for the 3500 Club, but you still need proper footwear because it's still going to be slippery. Water and food because you need that energy. You need to be hydrated. There have been several times where people have been dehydrated and have to be taken off these simple peaks. So... Don't skimp out on food or water or or shoes. Shoes is a good thing. So once again, that's a, a great introduction to the Catskill 3500 Club. We'll probably put more on a, on a later episode. We'll put more hikes on there. I would have to say we'll probably put the toughest, uh, which will be fun because there's definitely some good tough ones out there. But uh, we're also going to bring it into our, our last segment. I don't have this written on the note, Joe, so this is kind of a surprise. Uh, but Joe and I are going to talk about a bushwhack we did back in, oh, I don't know, it was two years ago on Slide Mountain? Yes, I think so. The back's the north side of Slide, right? Joe and I did a, a bushwhack with a, with six other people. Um, I think it was like two years ago. We went up Slide, down into the call of, of Cornell and Slide, and then we bushwhacked almost on the base of Slide. Down to Woodland Valley. Yeah, Uh so that was a crazy hike. The The funny thing is I brought a friend that I probably shouldn't have brought. Um, actually, he was on the last episode, my friend John. I don't think he was he was ready for this type of bushwhack, and it was intense. Some of our friends that went on the hike, one of them, probably one of the most experienced hikers in the Catskills, said it was the toughest hike that he's ever done. And this was good old Joe's idea. We were actually looking for a plane crash on the the side of the mountain we didn't find it we we scoured the mountain and but what an experience huh joe it was an interesting place to go um we went as you said over the top and then we went down the north side down to woodland valley and uh we broke up into groups of four groups of two and everybody was experienced hikers i thought except for your buddy john and uh (laughs) Nice. <laughs> and then we and we picked a place about a mile and a half across the mountain at different elevations to meet up. And uh, I was a little nervous as people were trickling in late. Yeah. So during the middle of that hike, I had my friend John with me. And I was nervous as heck because he just kept falling and falling and he looked miserable. So in the middle of that hike, when I, I think I, I really think we were only like not even a quarter of a mile away from you, Joe. And I was like, I'm going to have to helicopter this guy out of here. How am I going to get him out of here? <laughs> and uh, and I think he was thinking all the same way too, but he, he said later that in his mind, he knew he had to get out and he was going to get out himself. So, um, But like Joe said, we he Joe made a, a, a meeting point on a GPS map and it was crazy because we all were, were spread out at different elevations on the mountains. So there was groups, there was four groups, and we were all spread out, but we all met at the same point, which was absolutely phenomenal because I was just like, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> well, we, we basically did a grid search over, you know, I don't know a couple of square miles. You know? Yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah it, was aw- it was awesome. We were looking for what, kind, what type? Was that the B-52? It was supposed to be a B-17 that I read in an online report. But uh, after I did some more extensive research, I don't believe there is actually a B-17 in the Catskills. And that's a, that's a huge plane, right? Oh, it's a four inch and bomber. Yeah. Wow. That would be awesome. Yes. I thought so. Just, and, and, and you got to admit if, if that was somewhere there, we would have at least seen some remnants of it. Oh, I, if it was there in that area, I think, I think we would have seen it. But yeah, definitely a great adventure that Joe, Joe has taken me on 
amazing adventures and I guarantee he still plans to. Like I said, Joe and I are, are plane crash hunters and that's going to be a different episode. So hopefully the next episode, we might do that as the next episode or the one after that. But plane crashes are, are Joe's specialty and it's somewhat my specialty. Joe, you got like 27, 28 under your belt? 27 so far. 27. And I got, I think it's 21 or 22. I forgot. But it's going to co- it's going to cost you for the rest of them. Oh, it's, it's going to go. Oh, OK. <laughs> I don't mind because you've taken me on some some crap that that I don't want to go on again. Uh, but <laughs> but I, I say we, we say that all the time, Joe, and I think I would probably do it again. Yeah. I mean, you're you're out there in the Catskills where nobody else I think has ever been. You know, some of the places we go. Exactly. But once again, I'd like to thank everyone for listening. And if you want to buy buy me a coffee for for I don't know what reason, I'll I'll put a link up. Whatever you want to do, and I thank you, Joe, for participating in this. Uh, hopefully, we'll have you back for future ones. Definitely will. Your knowledge and your expertise of of the cat skills is definitely well thanked. <laughs> That's how you say it. Um, definitely. Thank you for joining us. Um, Joe, any last words? No, I had a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sash. Anytime. I'm glad you could join us for the second one, and sorry that that happened, but I, I've been checking the screens right now. It's still recording. We're almost 50 minutes in, so <laughs> at least it's still recording. So once again, thank you, everybody, for, for participating and listening to our our episode number two. And uh We'll definitely talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.